Hello and welcome to this third section on painting and drawing in our course on Adobe PSC 11. In this section I'm going to just round off some aspects of painting and drawing and look at some very important things you need to know about dealing with shapes on shape layers. Now the first thing I'd like to do is to remind you that when you draw a shape it's drawn as a vector graphic which is a very accurate way of representing a shape using lines and curves rather than dots or pixels so it's completely unlike the bitmap graphics or sometimes called raster graphics that are used to represent your photographic images now generally speaking all the time those shapes are represented as vector graphics they're very easy objects to manipulate with and I'm going to show you some of the manipulations in just a moment but to do certain things in PSC 11 you need to convert from that vector graphic form to the bitmap or raster graphic form now I'll come back to a couple of examples of when we need to do that later on but ultimately when it comes to a final image with drawn shapes on it, painted lines on it, whatever they may be, ultimately the whole thing will finish up down in a form that's effectively a rastographic form in a single flat image, perhaps printed on a printer or looked at on a screen. When you display Miss Muffet like this with the arrow on a website, the arrow is certainly not represented as a vector graphic. It will just be basically merged into the overall graphic. So think of it in terms of we put some vector graphic things over the image on this layer, but before we actually use the image, basically everything gets simplified and flattened down into a single layer. So that's an important concept really to have a reasonable understanding of. So let's start by making some changes to Little Miss Muffet's arrow. I'm going to make the background invisible so you can't see Miss Muffet. Just concentrate on the blue arrow. Obviously we have the shape one layer selected. Click on image transform shape and then on free transform shape and we have a panel down here that lets us control how we're going to transform this shape now we can do various things to it we could rotate it we can scale it make it bigger and smaller we can skew it in the center we can specify if we want to do something around for instance rotate around one corner we can specify that or of course we can rotate it around the middle we can enter the scaling factor if we're making bigger or smaller we can do it represent it as a change to a 100 percent width and height and we can constrain the proportions by having this checkbox checked when it comes to rotation rather than doing it visually we have a control over here that will let us actually rotate to a specific degree so let me just grab this little line here i'll show you how the rotation tool works as I drag it round, if I wanted to rotate it by exactly 34 degrees, that's it. Note that I haven't changed the size at all. Note also that if I hover the mouse inside the arrow's rectangle, I can move the arrow on the page. So that's a great way of being able to move these shapes around and do various free transformations. If I just look at one or two of the others, the scale transformation of course is easy. If I select that, hover over one of the corners and pull, I can scale it. Note it's constraining proportions. And then for skew, I could basically take one of the corners and twist it to a different kind of shape. So they're all the things you can do with the shape. The ones that are available, the options that are available, will largely depend on the particular shape that you're working with. And another important point in relation to this, if you've got a shape like this, say this line, if I right click on the line, one of the options is free transform shape, which is equivalent to choosing the menu option that we chose before and if you now right click again you have a whole range of options on the contextual menu things like rotate layer 90 degrees right and you can do some things by working with the options here by pulling on the corners some things you can do 
by using the contextual menu. So again, well worth experimenting with. Now I've gone back to the composite shape that we made earlier on. We made this by drawing a rectangle and then two circles. And what I'd like to do is just point out something important about this. When it comes to transforming a shape again after you've drawn it, one of the reasons for being careful about whether to put each shape on its own layer or whether to put several shapes on the same layer is that when you've got three shapes on a layer like this one when you come to do image transform free transform it applies to the composite shape so PSC 11 is actually going to treat this as one object for you now if I'd actually intended to draw this thing and make this this would be exactly what I wanted if I still had it as three separate objects a rectangle and two circles and I had to resize each of them individually to make the whole thing the size I wanted it might take me a long time by putting all three on the same layer PSC 11 is now going to treat this as one object for me so when I do my transform let's suppose I do a rotate and let's say I want to rotate about 10 degrees anti-clockwise well that's minus 16 then it's rotated as one object and that may be exactly the effect you want if you want to be able to treat them as separate objects you're much better off putting them on separate layers now I've switched to the layer with the butterfly on it and as before I could go into image transform shape free transform move it around all the other things that I said but I'm going to do a couple of different things to this because we can also do things like change color having drawn that butterfly as a blue butterfly it's quite straightforward to change the color so I'm going to go just onto the hand tool there so that I haven't got any drawing or painting tools selected and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the foreground color I'm going to go for say that sort of greeny color there okay note the foreground color is now different although of course the color on the butterfly hasn't changed but one of the tools we looked at before is this one which is the paint bucket tool if I select the paint bucket tool which by default uses the foreground color click on the butterfly and the butterfly changes color one very interesting variant on this is given that we've only got the butterfly on this layer if I click on the edit menu one of the options is fill layer and that brings up the fill layer dialog now you can fill a whole layer with a color or a pattern and I'm actually going to fill this butterflies layer with a pattern you'll only see the pattern in the butterfly of course so pattern is currently selected but I could choose the foreground color I could choose the background color, I could choose color from color picker or pattern which is what I'm going to use or we've got black 50% gray and white I'm going to go with pattern and the patterns are arranged in a number of sort of categories of patterns so there's artist surfaces, color paper, default list, then there's nature patterns, patterns 2 patterns let's go for patterns 2 choose one of those patterns, I'm going to choose that one click enter when I've chosen now watch what happens when I click OK in the fill layer dialog I finish up with the butterfly with that rather nice pattern fill now that's a very useful thing to be able to do with shapes that you're putting onto your images where you want to get an effect that perhaps enhances what's otherwise in the image anyway there are many patterns to choose from uh, so you've got a good chance of finding something that will really help you to make your picture look good so that's pretty much it on painting and drawing I hope that's helped you to get started I'm also separately going to look at the eraser which is very important and at rulers grids and guides but for now I hope you get a good chance to practice with all these various tools and I'll see you in the next section